Hello and welcome to my channel. How are you doing today? My name is Lynn or LV Handcrafted here on YouTube and today I'm really really excited to share with you this project. This is a storage unit that is available from Tonic Studios. I got it on super clearance and I have fully decked it out with Graphic 45, Let It Be papers and even some decorative hardware from Graphic 45. So it's um, a really fun project. It does take a little bit of time, but I'll walk you through the whole process. Let's make this. Okay, so this is how the storage unit ships. It's um, It ships flat and it is comprised of, you're not seeing all of the parts, just a few because I'm just gonna give you a little bit of a glimpse into each step because there are a lot of parts and so I didn't film the entire thing, just a, you know, a good portion, just enough so that I can show you what I'm doing at each step. But the uh, these pieces here are made of MDF, which stands for medium density fiberboard. And what I'm doing is applying, I'll end up actually applying two layers of gesso, white gesso to this. And the reason for that is so that it primes the surface, it primes the MDF so that it's ready to take on paint. Otherwise, uh, MDF is, uh, it's just going to soak up your paint and you might end up actually using or, or requiring more paint than you would otherwise if you if you didn't prime your surface and and so um so that's one of the purposes of gesso is just to um prepare your surface so that it's ready to take on whatever medium you want to um uh, apply over top of it and one thing that uh, you should be aware of if you're going to do uh, this project the way that I've done it is that anytime you paint or or um, gesso the pieces individually as I'm doing here you have to be really really careful to examine the pieces to see um, how snug of a fit they are with each other because if um so these pieces when when you do put them together uh they they kind of fit into one another almost like a jigsaw and if the pieces are cut let's say the pieces are cut from from one big piece and it's laser cut and um and so it's it's pretty snug. It's a pretty snug fit where you see a piece that juts out a little bit. There's going to be another piece that is recessed to accept that piece. And if those pieces are designed to be a very snug fit, then too many layers of additional things, too many layers of gesso, too many layers of paint, especially if you're putting on thick layers, which I do not recommend, but it can happen without you meaning to. Um, and you run the risk of those jigsaw pieces not fitting into each other because of the extra layers of gesso and paint. So with this particular unit, there's actually a little bit of give. Actually, there's quite a bit of give. And um, and so bear in mind, if you're working from another sort of DIY kit or you are, maybe you took something apart to upcycle it, just, just keep that in mind. Um, and in general, what you want to do is work in thin, thin layers and where you are painting into any areas that are um sort of protrusions that that seem like they're going to fit into a recessed area or you're painting into a recessed area that's going to accept another piece inside it 
just make sure that there aren't any globs of paint or gesso that there aren't uh, that there isn't a lot of buildup and that way when you go to assemble it you're not going to run into any problems if you do run into problems then you just might have to do a little bit of sanding you know just to remove some of that okay so I've taken the time to um, gesso and paint all of my, the surfaces. And the other way that you could put all of this together is to actually assemble everything and then gesso and paint. And that might, that might actually be a really good approach to this because there are some um, areas that I didn't realize would be visible so I didn't I didn't gesso or paint them and you can see that here like on the these side pieces I didn't think that those would be visible but they they will be and so if you assembled everything first then you'll know exactly what's visible what's not if you assemble everything first you also don't run the risk of layering on um too much gesso or too much paint to where the pieces don't fit into one another anymore. So there's there's definitely um, pros and cons to doing it both ways. I just found that because I was brushing by hand, it was just easier to gesso and, you know, to prime and paint the pieces while they were flat. And, and I wasn't working in these small, you know, little... Um, uh, 3D spaces here. Another really good option is is to use maybe a spray paint because um, I think that would really make quick work of it too. Um, gesso and acrylic paint both dry relatively quickly, but um, but there there was some time to that I wanted to give it in between layers to really fully fully dry, not just dry to the touch, but fully dry. And as I'm assembling this right now, all I'm doing is a, a bit of a, a bit of a dry fitting uh, because I just wanted to see how how everything fits together. You can actually see when I put this piece in, there are those gaps. So that's why I mentioned earlier with this piece in particular, this particular kit, there's there's a lot of play in, in terms of that space. And um, I wanted to do a little bit of a dry fitting just so that I could see what's visible, what's not visible, what do I need to touch up. And here, um, because it's such a small area and also because I'm working with black paint, I just uh, directly painted right onto the MDF. Now, I what I did when I assembled this for, for real though, and, um, and I definitely recommend that, that you use something similar, but um, I would definitely recommend using um, some sort of glue. And if you have wood glue, um, that might be a really good option. I just, I'm in my craft room putting this together, so I just used my PVA glue. <laughs> You'll see that in a moment. But, um, but, and here you can see uh, I've already uh, assembled the other pieces with the glue. And basically, with PPA glue, it it is a water-based glue, so it will absorb into porous surfaces. And MDF is very porous. It, it will just suck up all of that glue. And that's going to help really hold this together. And so def I definitely recommend that, um, that you use some kind of adhesive, whether it's a, a good wood glue, which I think would probably be the more correct uh, adhesive to use, but you know, use what you have. And this particular unit, what you saw uh, earlier was the, the main unit, and that's where the drawers will fit. And there are two other additional sections. This first, assembly portion. Um, I'm speeding through it relatively quickly because the kit does come with photo step-by-step -step instructions on how to assemble. So at least for that first part, I feel like there's there's good instructions that come 
with the with the kit itself. It's when you go to assemble the drawers that it's not rocket science, so you'll figure it out without without having to watch my video, I'm sure. But um but there aren't explicit instructions. So just bear that in mind and when we get to that point, I'll I'll actually talk through that a little bit uh, more slowly. So uh, what's cool with this unit in particular is that it does come with uh, two additional pieces. So there's a bottom portion that is a little bit of a stand, like a decorative stand for the, the uh, main unit to sit on top of. And then and that's what I'm working on right now. And then there's another piece that is the a decorative top or sort of almost like a mantle, you know, for for the top of your storage unit, and um, and so that just makes it a little bit a little bit extra ornate. If you wanted, um, you could permanently affix the two or all three pieces together so that it's all it's all just um, you know one one unit that's attached or you can leave the the base the stand separate and maybe use it for something else if you want you can use the the top portion the little mantle portion as something separate as well so that's your choice it, it they do come as separate pieces and I don't think the instructions even explicitly mention whether whether or not to adhere all three pieces together. So I think it's it's totally your choice whether whether you want to do that or not. And here you can see more raw MDF that's visible and and so, you know, that's definitely something to to bear in mind is whether um how you how you plan on finishing it and whether you want to assemble everything first or do what I've done where I've laid everything flat and painted it individually. I will say that getting into, because there's a little bit of play where the these pieces fit into one another, because I primed with black or I primed with white gesso and then I paint it with black, you can, you, some of the gaps are big enough where you can kind of see into them. And that stark contrast between white and black uh, really makes any, uh, all of those gaps just very noticeable. So, and I'm working with the two extremes, right? I'm working with white gesso because I don't have black gesso. Um, and, and, and with black paint because I, I felt like black would go well with the Let It Be um, collection from Graphic 45. So, you know, this might not be as, as pronounced of an issue if you're working with different colors, but this is where I, I sort of feel like, um, you know, I, I thought that maybe painting the pieces individually would actually help to prevent that issue because you're, you, you can paint everything, uh, and really get into all those nooks and cranies. But, um, one, I didn't do a super good job painting because I, I just didn't bother painting in black the areas that I didn't think would be visible. <laughs> but then it wasn't until after I put it together that I realized, well, there's more that's actually visible than, than I initially intended or expected. So, um, so that's just a couple of things that I've learned and I actually did, there's another storage, uh, MDF storage unit by Tonic Studio as well. It's a smaller one and I, and it was on sale recently with the vault sale. So I got that one as well. Uh, I don't think it's shipped yet, but, but I'm going to try it the other way. I'm going to try to assemble first and then paint second and see how that compares to, to how I treat, how I created this project. And so when you see that video, you'll probably um, get my final conclusions on that. But to decorate these pieces, now everything's dried. I gave it a good um, uh, drying time overnight. And it's um, wonderful that Graphic 45 includes these uh, gray board or chipboard pieces that are already pre-cut, perfectly sized to decorate 
different areas of the storage unit. What I think you're meant to do, I think what you're meant to do is actually just cover the gray board with your pad and paper and then just cut around it. I don't know why I would want the extra gray board, the extra thickness of the gray board. So I'm using the gray board as a template and I just traced around it and I'm going to, with the straight cuts, I'm just going to use my utility blade. You could use a craft knife, whatever you are most comfortable with. You could you could use a paper trimmer or a guillotine also. The straight cuts, I would definitely uh, recommend using whatever implement um, that's going to give you a nice straight cut. So uh, I personally, I wouldn't hand cut it with scissors just because I'm, I'm terrible at hand cutting a straight line. So, uh, so that's what I would recommend. And what I've done is I've just left the, um, all the curvy, all the curvy areas to hand cut. And so that gives me really nice straight lines and, and all I have to cut by hand then are these, uh, more ornate areas. And I, you know, my biggest tip is just to take your time, use sharp scissors, um, just like fussy cutting, you know, turn, turn the paper as opposed to turning your scissors, but ultimately just do what's most comfortable for you. And I, um, always rely on my emery board to kind of sand down my, uh, fussy cutting, or in this case, um, just, you know, sanding down those curves, just, just to remove a little bit of the jagginess, uh, if there is any, and, um, that helps to really kind of smooth things out too. And of course, then, uh, inking, and I'm using the Graphic 45, uh, Classic Black, hybrid ink. Inking your edges definitely, definitely um, hides any imperfections in, in your cuts. And so this is, for me, um, a lifesaver because then, you know, any anywhere where it might still look a little bit off, it's going to really be hidden quite a bit with the um, this sort of imperfect um, uh, kind of vignetting of the edges with some black ink. And this step for me is also really important because my base paint is black, but the papers are white core. And so if I didn't do this, the white core of my pattern paper, it's going to really be visible against the black of the, of the unit. So really, really important step to, um, especially if you're working on dark papers and you don't want the, that white core of your pattern papers to be visible, definitely take the time to ink the edges because it's going to give you a much, a much cleaner, a little bit more seamless um, look. And I love that... These templates, they, they are um, perfectly sized to give you a little bit of a black border all the way around that, that section that it's, it's meant to um, uh, decorate. And I, I'm using liquid adhesive for everything. Normally when you see me making things like al mini albums and, um, you know, uh, 3D projects, what I'll do is put double-sided dry adhesive along the edges so that I can get adhesive all the way, all the way to the edge. And then I just squiggle on a little bit of liquid adhesive in the center. But for this entire project, I actually only use liquid adhesive and, and I took the extra time to try to spread it out nice and evenly, spread it out all the way to the edges. And that way I have nice, strong, adhesive everywhere, um, as close to edge to edge as I could manage. And I think that's, that's going to help with, um, giving me a nice permanent, um, bond between the pattern paper and the, uh, storage unit. And I've cut these pieces so that they, so that the pattern continues. So, um, 
So it has that nice effect of looking like it's sort of wrapped uh, around from that top piece to uh, this sort of shelf here. And I love the contrast of the um, of the bright, bright yellow sunflowers against the the dark black. So so really, really lovely. This the, that particular pattern I love uh, quite a bit because it does have the um, all of the colors in the um, the color palette of Let It Be. So it's a nice it's a nice focal area. Okay, so now on to the, the drawers. There are two sizes of drawers, and, and this is how they come. They come flat-packed, and it's um, made from, I don't know what weight, but it's made from gray board or uh, chipboard. I would say maybe it's a medium weight, and um, you do want to pay attention to uh, how these have been cut because it's it's been well designed to where there's going to be um, a, you know one edge that folds completely sort of flush um, against the the other and uh, and so because the chipboard does have a little bit of thickness to it so on on one side you'll see that thickness and then on the other side you'll just see um, the panel. Like here, you don't see the 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 thickness of uh, the adjoining side. You just see the front panel. All I'm doing here is on each of the four corners, I am taping it. Just regular tape. You don't have to use anything um, super strong here or anything super fancy. And I forgot this one step, which I think is important. So I took one of the panels that is meant to be a decorative mat layer on to the uh, front of the drawers. And what I did was I used that as a template to punch two holes. These two holes are the holes that the handles, the decorative metal handles that I'll be attaching to the drawers, that's where the two brads go that will attach the handle to the drawer front. And so I've already kind of marked those out and, um, and I'm using the uh, chipboard that's meant to be a, uh, a decorative panel onto your drawer front. I've used that as my, as my template to transfer those locations of where to punch. And I used my, um, big bite to um to go ahead these are one eighth inch holes perfect size holes for the uh, metal handles by graphic 45 and so i've gone ahead it's easier it's definitely easier to do that when everything is still flat so i did have to cut through and and sort of flatten out that for that front panel but i didn't have to flatten the whole thing i, I just hung it off the edge of my um table and I was able to get the uh, the the big bite um, into that panel and and make those two um, holes so once you have this tape together with just some plain old you can use some scotch tape you can use you can even use washi it, it doesn't have to be super strong it just needs to to hold it together so that you can start to um, you know, really uh, decorate it, assemble it, and by the time we have all of the pattern papers on here, it's going to it's going to be um, secure and and um, and so you don't have to worry about what you're using as being part of um, what's going to keep everything together. And I am only going to show these two drawers. There's actually uh, in total. There's actually eight drawers. And what I've done is with each uh, pair of drawers, because they, they sit side by side, with each pair, I've uh, chosen a different color from the color palette of the Let It Be collection. So in the Let It Be collection, the, the color palette is um, greens, yellows, reds, and blacks. 
And so for each pair of drawers, I've um, used some of the patterns and solids from Let It Be. And I'm using the more solid pattern for uh, to go around the sides. And then I'm using one of the more um, one of the more uh, contrasty patterns for the bottom of the drawer, uh, just to just to you know have it be a little bit um, more interesting. And I know that once you're using the drawers, you're you're gonna see probably the sides more than you'll see the bottom if it's if the drawer is full, but. I just like the idea of having something really decorative in that in that larger area at the bottom. So what I've done is I've cut some strips. These strips are an inch and a, an inch and three quarters tall, and that's the essentially that's the height of each of the drawers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start uh, just attaching, gluing these strips all the way around the inside. I'm going to start with the inside of the drawer. And you saw what all I did there was I pushed the edge of my strip here against one corner. And then I'll do the same here. I'll push that corner that I just scored and folded, hold it tight into that corner. And then on the next corner, I'm just going to give a little bit of a pinch so that I have a nice mark for where I can score and then fold a nicer, more crisp line. And I'm just going to work my way around the inside of the box like that. Now, to to for the inside, all I'm going to do is just the th three inside walls first. The, um, the two sides and the back wall of this drawer. The front the front of the drawer, I'm going to cut a piece so that it's ready to go, but I'm not going to actually glue it down yet. And the reason for that is because I want to use the Graphic 45 uh, decorative um, uh, hardware, the, the metal handles, as a drawer pull. And the way that those get attached, I, I mentioned a little bit earlier, is through brads. And I want to actually cover the uh, the tines or the legs of the brads when they get uh, attached to the inside of the drawer. And so that's why I want to leave that final that final wall um, undecorated because the decorative paper is going to hide those brads and give me a nicer finish at the at the end of the day. So here's what I mean by I'm using liquid adhesive and I am just using a piece of scrap um, cardstock to as my glue spreader and I'm just getting that glue nice uh, nicely spread out all the way edge to edge as, as edge to edge as I can manage. But definitely whatever adhesive you use, you, you always want to be burnishing really well just so that you can uh, spread out that glue more evenly so that you can uh, really make sure your paper is firmly attached, you don't have any bubbles, and also to make sure if you are using a dry adhesive that you push as much air out of um, that space between the pattern paper and the chipboard um, as possible because any air that's trapped in there with uh, dry adhesive it's it could potentially just dry it completely out and then it's going to lose its um, adhesive strength altogether. So I'll do that again. So I'm starting off with a, just a long strip, um, you know, 12 inch. This is actually scrap left over from an earlier project. But if you're starting from a fresh sheet, 12 inches, and um, on the one end, just push it all the way into one corner, then work your way around to the next corner and just give a little bit of a pinch and just to mark where you need to score a line. And I would always recommend scoring and, um, and then and then folding. That way you get a really, first off, you, you know that your line's going to be straight, but you're also gonna get a really crisp uh, fold. And also you'll have, um, you'll have less uh, cracking as well. The Graphic 45 papers, I've actually never experienced any any issues with the, the 
uh, paper or the cardstock cracking. So, but still, you just it that's gonna really depend on the paper um, that you're using. And so, so take the time to score. I mean, I'm not giving measurements because one. The you could use this technique for for any project. Two, um, it it may be just like a smidge off here and there, just depending on how you taped, you know, your corners together, and so you know it's hard to to really give exact measurements. Uh, I wouldn't want you to pre-score all of those lines and then find that it's a little bit off and then you don't have quite as nice of a finish. And so, um, so this is how you can kind of, you know, custom fit, uh, anything that you might be ups upcycling, for example, um, you might find it not worth it to, to measure <laughs> out each segment, just kind of work on the fly and, and, um, and you'll see that, the what I end up with ends up being a good, ends up being a good fit. So, um, so that's, that's one way that you can, it's just a technique that you can use to, and then adapt to other projects as well. So, so I've gone ahead and lined the, uh, three inside walls of my drawer. So that's the two sides and the, the back wall, the front wall, um, is identified by the thumb notch that has already been cut out of it. And, um, and so that's how you can tell what, where's the front, where's the back. So now with those three, um, down, I am going to line the bottom of this. And, um, for this, I did, I did measure this out if you, if you do want, um, a bit of a starting point. But again, I would definitely just recommend, uh, sort of measuring to to fit because like I said it, it, my, my measurements might be a smidge just like a smidge off from from what yours ends up being just depending on how how I assemble things together and um, and so uh, it could be like a, maybe a sixteenth of an inch off but even even that little bit could, could make a difference where you could actually see a, a visible gap. Um, so this, just so that you have at least a starting point, if you're if you're just trying to gauge, you know, how large of a piece do you need? The bottom, the bottom inside piece of the small drawer is three and three sixteenths of an inch by three and thirteen sixteenths of an inch. So you may want to start maybe a sixteenth of an inch larger and then um, trim down a little bit as needed and that way you can really um, customize it and uh, and have it fit exactly exactly what you need the larger box or the larger drawer that bottom section measures six and five eighths of an inch by three and thirteen sixteenths of an inch so um, so that's a that's a good starting point if if you wanted to start there or start start a smidge uh, just a smidge larger than that and then trim down and then I find um, when I'm like trimming to fit I I prefer my guillotine because my guillotine can take little teeny beeny you know slivers of flies eyelash off of these strips and and that's what I prefer I prefer to just take little little slivers off until I get a really nice snug fit and I find that my blade trimmers they aren't really good with um super small um uh slices like that and the other thing in particular, especially with the um, the bottom piece of these drawers that uh, I, you know, I gave you some sizes to start with, but that's, that's going to also vary depending on how thick of a paper you're using too. So that's another thing to, to bear in mind that, you know, there are a lot of these variables because it is a very um, you know, uh, 
DIY kind of project. And so, so all of that, all of that does factor in. So, um, what I'll do is also, um, once I get the bottom pieces cut, I will go ahead and glue that down though. If you wanted, you could wait until you get that fourth, uh, front inside wall attached or glued. Um, but I didn't find that it made a difference whether I um, put the bottom piece in first or that front wall in. From from the perspective of you know functionality, that front uh, inside wall is probably going to be the least visible, and that's that's sort of why I um, tried as much as possible to have my long strip um, go or at least be long enough so that it can fully wrap around the back wall so that you get a really nice clean finish and no seams if you if you do have to um, piece together you know multiple strips it's better to kind of do that a little bit closer to the front wall because it's going to be a, um, less visible so that's why that front wall I, I didn't I didn't round the corners to the front wall um, I just I just started and stopped um, the uh, pattern paper right when it hits the front wall. And so I've got my pieces and I, di I do like when, uh, sort of like what I did for that top unit, <laughs> I do like um, cutting the pattern papers such that the pattern just continues from one section to the other. It's not going to be all that noticeable with these um inside with these drawers because again, once you once you're using it and you have it filled in, you're not going to hard you're hardly ever going to see that pattern, but it's a little bit of a um kind of neat detail if if you are making these things to sell for example it's just it's just a nice thing that if people notice it then it's kind of that little attention to detail that the I think for somebody who does notice it they'll really really appreciate it. it's um so I, th I just think it's kind of cool and so again I'm just using my um specifically I'm using Lanco um pH neutral here because Sometimes I was I was giving the Nuvo um, Deluxe adhesive a uh, a go, but I I really find that their um, glue bottle is really hard to squeeze out the glue. I don't know if my glue is old. This did come in a kit, and it might have even come in a uh, pretty old kit that I got out of the vault. So so I don't know if it's because the glue is old or the bottle it's just too firm of a plastic for me to squeeze out or maybe I'm just maybe I'm just weak I don't have <laughs> good hand strength I don't know but uh, I did give that a try um, but I ultimately I really prefer my Lanco pH neutral adhesive because it's a nice and expensive adhesive but it's you know it's a book binding adhesive it's a really good quality adhesive and I don't know what I'll be storing into in these um, drawers but the Lanco pH neutral adhesive is acid free and all of that good stuff and I don't believe the tonic glue is so um so bear that in mind too if you whatever glue you're using do choose the appropriate glue if if you do plan to put photos or anything in in these drawers that's the inside of the box now for the outside of the box or sorry the drawers I am going to decorate in red and all of the boxes are going, all of the drawers are going to have the same red border going along the, um, the walls on the outside. So I've just cut long strips and again, I'm using the patterns and solids and I'm going to be using, um, the more solid red and this part exactly the same as the, as the inside where I've cut strips that are one and three quarters of an inch tall and as long of um, a piece as I can get. So when I was working off of a fresh sheet, that would be 12, the full 12 inches. But uh, definitely keep your scraps and, and, um, and use them, uh, use them. So I will do the exact same thing where I'm going to spread the glue out 
But uh, what I'm looking for is to any uh, anywhere where there might be a join, I want that to be more close to the back because, of course, the front is where um, things are things are going to be the most visible. So as much as possible, I want to make sure, especially going along the front edge, I want to make sure that it's um, I have I'm starting with a piece that's long enough to wrap around the two front corners, the two corners of that front wall. That way we get a nice rounded edge and the seam, any seams that we have will be closer towards the back where they're going to be less visible. And so nice generous amount of glue here. I'm not worried about using too much glue, but but I do want to spread it out um, relatively thin. The because the chipboard it's it's just going to soak up all of that glue, and you so you can kind of see that because I'm lining these corners with pattern paper both on the inside and the outside, these strips while decorative they are going to be actually what what holds the the those sides together at the end of the day. So that's why I was saying that the the tape we use to um to assemble the drawer isn't the only thing that's going to be keeping it together. Certainly if you were going to maybe just paint the um the chipboard then then you might want to uh, figure on something else that's a little bit more strong. But um, but this was always going to be my plan. That is to use pattern papers for um, for covering and for uh, providing strength to to um, the the unit or the drawer. And so um, here I'm gonna end up with a little bit of a seam, but I am okay with that. And so I'll um, just make sure that I'm kind of wiping any excess uh, adhesive as I go. It will dry clear, but it's still, um, I don't want any globs of, of glue anywhere. And I wanna try to keep everything as, as neat and tidy as I can. And I, I do end up um, overlapping. I, um, but uh, I think for one of the drawers, I did just butt up where one pattern paper ended. I for the next piece of pattern paper, I just butt it up directly against it. I think you're going to end up with a, a better finish if you overlap a little bit so that there's no chance any of the chipboard uh, is visible. So then I started to do that more consistently. And I think um, I think I would definitely uh, recommend that over putting, you know, the two pieces of paper end to end. You're going to end up with a little bit of that, like a little bit of... Um, doubling up where that seam is in terms of thickness of paper, but I think that's going to be hardly noticeable if, if at all. The other thing is that you could, and I haven't decided if I'll go back and do this or not, but you could also put another um, uh, piece of pattern paper along the bottom of the uh, drawer. And I was actually thinking, in fact, with maybe I'll do this with the second storage unit. I was actually thinking of cutting a piece that is uh, maybe about an inch uh, wider and taller than the footprint of the drawer and then um, mitering um, the corners and actually wrapping from the bottom, lining it with pattern paper and then wrapping that up onto the walls or the sides of the drawer so that you get a really nice rounded finish and that the bottom of the drawer is completely completely um, decorated for one. You are also reinforcing that uh, corner, the corners along the bottom of the drawer and you get a, a nice finish where there's there's no, at the end of the day, then there's no visible chipboard. So, so I may just do that. I think I will do that, and and um, that way when that tutorial comes out, you'll see, you'll see how that how that works out. I I didn't do that with this one because 
I um, didn't think about it until I was already a couple of drawers in, and uh, I wanted everything to be consistent, so so I just kept going. And here again, I'm inking the edges of everything with the classic black hybrid ink from Graphic 45, and that way, that way you're covering the the thickness of the chipboard which is visible and as well covering the white core of the pattern paper and to make everything consistent I even inked up the the corners where there isn't white core showing but that's just so that we get a consistent almost like that sort of vignetting sort of the aging you know of the corners and so that that's more aesthetic for, uh, well, it's all aesthetic because I'm trying to cover up, you know, things that I don't want visible, namely the white core, namely the chipboard. But for those corners, it's it's for that consistency of uh, framing all four sides of any particular panel. And then I also inked up the, uh, the extra strips of um, pattern paper that's going to line the front of the drawer. So here you can see I've, I've prepped already, I've assembled, um, just as I, you saw me with the green set of drawers, I've done that with the other uh, sets as well in each of the different colorways. So here's a, a little peek of all four colorways. Isn't that cool? So I think I just think it's going to be really fun to have like a different color um, drawer for each of these. Now the uh, the handles that I'm using are from Graphic 45 and it, it works out really perfectly too. I was really excited that this worked out because I, if you saw my Crafty Hall video of my uh, design team goodies, I, I picked up these metal handles with this drawer uh, storage unit in mind and I knew, I hadn't yet opened the storage unit. I already bought it but I, I didn't open it and take a good good look at everything but there are product photos so I I knew that there was a wider drawer and a more narrow drawer and the these metal handles are perfect because one package has four handles two that are wider and two that are more narrow and it just worked out that that it just scale wise works really well with these uh, size drawers as well and here's here's where the um, the chipboard I, I keep thinking of it as, as a template, but I think you're you're actually meant to use it as the decorative layer, as your matte layer, because we did get one each for each of the eight drawers. So I think you're meant to actually glue your pattern paper directly onto this chipboard and then glue the chipboard onto your storage unit. But uh, I'm not doing that. I'm just using it as a template to, to cut out my pattern papers. But... It came in handy that we have one of each because my idea here is that I want to use this sheet, this particular pattern paper, and this is from the paper collection. And I want to uh, ultimately have the the design stretch across all eight drawers. And that way... Um, you can kind of still see the full design, but it's going to be broken out into each um, each drawer front. And so that was my first attempt, and now I'm, I'm trying to um, really do it for reals. And <laughs> I already used... So in each um, paper collection, you get two sheets of each double-sided design and that's so that if you want to use the front on one project and use the back on another project you don't have to choose between the two. I've already used my uh, the other sheet of this pattern paper so I definitely I only have the one I definitely knew I wanted to use it so I wanted to really be certain that of my alignment. So you see me continuing to um, check the placement time and time again. It's definitely one of those things where I wanted to uh, measure, measure twice, cut once sort of deals. And I, um, I was uh, certain to get my husband's feedback too on how to place things. And what I'm trying to do is also 
I want to leave a little bit of a gap in between each of these panels. Not necessarily to be realistic with the the actual gap that will be there just because of the um the shelving unit itself, but at least to to um show a little bit of a break because I think it'll look a little bit more uh logical um with a little bit of a break. So I'm trying to be consistent with the spacing and just make sure that um I don't somehow end up cutting too much. But at the same time, me being me, I also want to leave myself um, as much usable uh, off-cut area as possible. So that was the other consideration as well. So I um, here's so the reason why you see this red strip is I've made pencil marks, but my pencil marks are in the middle somewhere of this uh, sheet that I'm cutting down and it's it's hard to tell if I've actually lined that up with my cutting blade. So when I find that that's the case what I do is I will use some scrap paper nice and long that I can line up with my pencil mark and then line it up with um, square it up with my piece of paper and then see um, whether I've lined it up correctly with my cutting blade. So just a little bit of a tip there. And here you can see I've written onto uh, the chipboard itself the dimensions that you want to cut this piece to. That measures three and three sixteenths of an inch by nine by one and nine sixteenths of an inch. And that's not perfect. You can still see a little bit of chipboard there. But it's um as close as I have tick marks for on my on any of my cutting devices, I don't have anything that goes um, to uh, less than a sixteenth of an inch. So, um, so I think that's why they've provided these chipboard pieces and and not just giving you a bunch of measurements. One because there's a notch cut out of this, so there's that rounded edge. But I'm. I'm taking out the thumb notch because I'm using the drawer, um, the metal handles. See how that that's gonna look now. So when I attach that front um, uh, layer of pattern paper, I didn't try to do anything to match the the curve of the thumb notch, and I'm not doing anything to try to match the curve of the thumb notch with these uh, layers either, because I want it to be nice and flat. And so, um, but I think because these measurements don't land on a standard sort of increment, um, maybe they do if you are measuring in millimeters, but measuring in um, inches, it, it doesn't really line up 100%, but that's, it comes close to that. So the smaller drawer is three and three sixteenths of an inch by one and nine sixteenths of an inch tall. And then the, the wider, the larger drawer is six and nine sixteenths of an inch wide by one and nine sixteenths of an inch tall. And again, you know, that's not going to be an exact match to these templates, but it's going to be close enough and close enough is fine for me because there's, um, all the only difference that's going to make ultimately is just how much of a border is visible of the drawer itself. And you can see very little. There's very little bit. And that's why I felt okay with using red because red is a very strong color and, um, and it can overtake. But for one, I knew I was going to ink all of the edges in black so that that helps to kind of tone things down a little bit but then also I knew there was going to be a very a very light um uh a very small you know uh border all the way around once the decorative layer gets put on what I did a moment ago was I just placed this um piece of pattern paper onto the front lined it up centered it up and where I punched the holes that will um, be where my handle, the metal handles get attached, I just transferred those markings, you know, those locations onto my pattern paper so that I can punch the holes through my pattern paper as well. 
But you know, it's just patterned paper. So what you could do is you could just glue it on. It's a little, it's going to be a little bit tough, but you could glue it on and then just uh, use a pokey tool and poke right through that pattern paper. That that works just as well too. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to that was at the very bottom of my design, which I figured if I if I messed up there, you know, um, at least it's the bottom. <laughs> but now I'm going to move my way up. That first cut that I made was the gap that I wanted to leave between each um, row of drawers. And I, I'm going to take off uh, or I took off another little sliver. Just wanted to make sure that when I go to make this cut that I don't cut off too much of the word B because... I think that's um, going to be one, that's going to be an, an area of focus because of the high contrast of the white lettering against the black. And and that's got the really large sunflower too. So I want to make sure that I preserve the legibility of that portion of the design as much as possible. And so I wanted to really be careful to, to, um, to measure that placement just right. And so I'll just continue. So now that I have that set, I, I sort of have an idea for the spacing in between drawers, um, in between each row and in between the two columns of drawers. And I'm going to be consistent when I cut each piece. And you can see that you know, I, I know the measurement, I gave you the measurement, but I still bring on a previously cut piece just to make sure that, that I've lined it up correctly on my, on my guillotine here. So, um, I really, this was one of those things where some parts of this project I was working like into the wee hours of the morning. This I made sure I was doing during, <laughs> during the day when I'm not, tired. I'm not um, as likely to make a mistake. And so I really, really did take my time with this, this part, just to make sure that, especially knowing that I only have the one sheet of this pattern paper left. Um, I had a plan B, I had a second option, but, but I really, really like the idea of just this sort of um, larger, design as opposed to a small repeat pattern and and then breaking that design up um across the multiple drawer fronts so i the that concept just really i just couldn't let that go and so really really wanted to make sure that that i uh got it right and um these last two you know i definitely recommend uh you know, I'm already halfway through, so it didn't save me a ton of time. But I definitely recommend once you have one cut, you feel kind of um, confident with that. It is, as with uh, most things, um, a little bit easier to do things as much as possible in like um, kind of like a factory line sort of um, mode where the one, you know, if it, if it takes four cuts to make your, to cut down all of your pieces, doing the same cut across, you know, each, um, you know, strip and, um, is going to be a little bit faster and maybe a little bit less error prone because you're making the same measurement and you're making the same cut as opposed to, okay, cut one full piece <laughs> all the way around and then cut the next, um, full piece all the way around. Um, it just depends it, it really on, on what works best for you. So definitely do whatever works best, but, um, it can be more efficient if you're just doing the same cut at the same measurement and, you know, across all, uh, four rows of drawers and then, um, move on to the next step and the next cut that you have to make and transfer that. But now that I have everything, everything set, what I can do is, Again, using my template, um, or you can line these up if you want to be extra cautious, you can line them up against your drawers um, and transfer the the marks um, individually for each drawer. 
Um, you could definitely do that. And that might be, that actually might be the more surefire way if you think, because this is all handmade. And so there may be like a little bit off here and there. So if you want to be certain what you want, you want to do is probably how I did the first set, which is um, line up your pattern paper against the actual drawer that that's going to get attached to and then transfer the um, the whole locations to the back of your pattern paper. I um, I just did this for quickness. So here I'm punching through all layers and the big bite's perfect for that because it's it's a um, it's heavy duty. you know it can it can easily go through all three layers in in one go with very little effort. Um, but like I said, you know you could do it the way I did it for the green um, boxes, which is to, uh, if you want to be like a hundred percent sure that everything's going to line up right, you know, I would definitely recommend doing it that way. So then I'm going to, again, I really want to make sure that I have everything in the right order because order matters. And then I'm going to drop each of these pieces inside the drawer that it's going to get attached to just so that there's no, no confusions here later. What's uh, what needs to go where. But let me go ahead and show you, at least for the green layer, how, how to put the handles on. So the um, metal handles you can find in the um, decorative hardware section of Graphic 45's shop. And I am just going to, again, use liquid adhesive, use my little uh, cardstock scrap there to scrape and smooth out that adhesive. I um, These little brads are tiny and they were just bouncing all over the place and so I, I just put them um, onto just some low tack tape so that I don't, because I did drop a bunch and, and it took forever to find them all again. Uh, so to prevent that from happening, I, I just stuck them onto some tape and, and that way they're nice and secure. All you need to do is just, you know, kind of separate the uh, the legs a little bit of the bread and uh, just stick it through from the front uh, through to the inside of the box. Make sure that you are holding the the head of the brad very snugly against the front of the drawer and when you when you fold down the tines when you fold down the legs make sure that it's a nice firm um it's nice firmly attached because otherwise your handle and i made the mistake i wasn't being super careful on one of them and the handle feels a little bit loose and when you've done it the way that I've done it here where you are hiding the brads with this piece of pattern paper there's really nothing that you can do um short of you know cutting through the pattern paper peeling it off and um and then retightening the brads and then putting another piece of pattern paper on top um but the way that I glue, where I've you know really laid down <laughs> glue edge to edge, it it's a tough call. Um, what I did there, I'll show again, because this I think is, I would maybe it's optional. Um, I don't think it is, but I wanted to address the thumb notch that's been um, punched out of the chipboard, and the chipboard has some thickness there. So what I, I visually to, to just look at it you, from the front, clearly you can't see that thumb notch. And so it may be visually no big deal to not address it at all and, uh, and, and just leave it. But the, the problem is, is that if, um, if, especially if you're going to make this maybe to sell or make it as a gift, I kind of feel like it's weird to have that gap of where the thumb notch is between the two layers of pattern paper. And that might be an area if somebody were to maybe pull the drawer from there, 
it's it might crush the pattern papers. It might um it just is an area that that could get a little bit beat up if you just leave it the way that it is because it's it's kind of weak. It's it's just two pieces of pattern paper. If the if the inside of that of that wall and the outside of the wall get glued together, it might be okay, but it's I think it might look weird too. Uh, that that there's something different going on there where the thickness isn't the same as um, the rest of the front wall of the drawer. So to address that, I filled in that thumb notch with Kalau 3D glue gel. And so that being a, a thick gel that's going to hold um, its its shape more or less and um, and have some thickness into in it, it's it's just gonna fill in that area and make that portion actually feel solid. And so, um, one thing here, because I did apply the bottom, this is why you, you see me uh, or saw me trim, just take little slivers off of the height of this strip, is because I did uh, attach to the bottom first. And so, like I said, just one layer of pattern paper and that does make a difference in, in the final sizing of everything. So I did have to you know trim off a fly's eyelash from the height of this strip and um, that way the top is nice and flush with the, uh, the that front wall. And so parts of this process just uh, just did take a long time in between gluing steps and um, I wasn't always good with putting the needle back into my glue bottle. So that is definitely, I think that's one of the things I probably struggled with the most is my glues um, because the project itself is easy. It's It just takes time. And it's the sort of thing that, that I like to take my time with just to really make sure I get a nice finish at the end. And so here I forgot to put my glue gel. So I'm going to fill in that thumb notch with glue, just fill it in completely. And um, try not to super overfill it, but the glue will go where it needs to go. You just don't want too much there because then um, you're going to waste some. It's going to ooze out of the top and, and you're going to waste some. If you don't have enough, it's um, it's easy enough to, uh, with the syringe, you'll see me do it in a moment, with this syringe to just, um, you know, dab on a little bit more and then just push it down. So so you can always add a little bit more to kind of top it off. And I was trying to be really neat and tidy and use a cardboard uh, scrap to to scrape off the, the top of the glue gel. But I really think that you get a nicer finish if you just run your finger <laughs> across the top there. It, it, you know, you, you end up with a nice smoother finish. Okay, so that's our drawers done. Now onto the, um, this is the final bit here. This is the back and uh, the sides of the unit, which I chose this um, particular pattern, which uh, at the moment, it, it uh, I, th I want to say this is actually part of the paper collection itself and not part of the patterns and solids. I could be wrong on that, but um, but I love it because it's got a nice uh, base of black, and but it's still got a lot of brightness with uh, the yellow print, and it's not it's not too busy. So so I feel like it's it's good for the um, the back and sides because it still makes the unit look interesting, but is not like the superstar of um, where you want to have your focus and attention. Now this piece, uh, bear in mind that the piece for the the top, the back of the top unit, it, it is slightly larger, it is slightly different than uh, the one that we used earlier. So you, you, there are two different um, mat layers or I, I use I am using those chipboard pieces as templates, but uh, like I said, I think you are meant to, especially if you paint, if you wanted to paint those um, 
uh, chipboard pieces instead of using pattern paper because that could be another way of decorating is um, with your mats and layers is to to use the provided chipboard pieces as um, uh, your um, paper stock I guess and then you can paint it however you want to paint it. The um, So again I'm gonna ink up all of the edges here and Technically, this for this piece here, it it wasn't quite it wasn't quite tall enough. Um, I think it was about I want to say like maybe three eighths of an inch, um, maybe smaller, maybe I, around three eighths of an inch, uh, shy of the actual template. But uh, because it's it's primarily black and the base of my storage unit is black. I figure if it's off a little bit, it's not the end of the world, and and I'll just cheat it a little bit. I'll just leave it a little bit extra dark, like that extra space um, towards the bottom, which is going to be less noticeable. And so then I'll go ahead and attach uh, these pieces. I do also want to mention that um, the two side pieces, the, the really decorative kind of curvy sides of this uh, front or this top mantle as I've been calling it. They do also have templates for both the inside uh, and the outside edge. So if you wanted to decorate those areas as well, you you have the matte layer pieces, chipboard pieces to do that. So that's also an option that I, I decided not to take. I actually kind of preferred that they're black. I didn't want everything to be covered in pattern paper. But look how neat that that really cleans everything up. So ultimately at the end of the day I didn't really need to paint um, the the back of this unit because well I wasn't sure when I did paint it I wasn't sure if I wanted to uh, just leave it black or actually cover it in pattern paper. Um, but uh, if I had made the decision in advance to just um, cover it with pattern paper it wouldn't have been necessary to to paint it at all. But um, but I'm going to really, again, this is a, a larger piece, um, so I'm going to try to spread out my glue as, as, um, as uh, evenly as I can, try to get it all the way to the edge as much as I can. The Lanco pH Neutral Adhesive, uh, Liquid Adhesive, it is... It is a um, quick grabbing adhesive, so you do have to work a little bit quickly if if you are spreading it out thinly as I am, because it it will start to get tack, tacky, which is good because that just means it's going to grab faster, but it may start to dry faster than you're ready to. And one thing is, is that if it does get tacky, it's going to grab and hold and it might not give you time to do what I'm doing here, which is to, um, to burnish and to, I've got this really nice, uh, wide scraper, which is great when I'm making mini albums for the covers of larger albums, because you can scrape such a, such a wide area and it's nice for just pushing out, um, all the air bubbles, smoothing everything out, really making sure that um, the adhesive is nice and and spread out, but really that there aren't any bubbles um, and that your paper doesn't have wrinkles and stuff. So work from the inside and push out so that you're pushing the air out towards the edges and it has somewhere to go. So uh, these two pieces are for the um, uh, two sides. So um, so they are just plain squares. So you can just cut, cut it uh, down as a square. And so it's four inches wide, each of them. So I'm going to cut off a section that's eight inches. And then in terms of the height, I, I just measured it. And so I, um, but I still want to remeasure it just to make sure. Um, the height is eight and one eighth of an inch. And again, all of these pieces that they've uh, provided as chipboard matte elements are, do leave a little bit of that, a little bit of a black border. And, um, and so you could, if you're, if you're doing, um, you know, what I'm doing here, you could just measure and then 
adjust it just depending on how much of a border you want um, visible, especially for pieces like this where it's just uh, straight cuts. So really, really easy to do that. And um, and so I'm going to do, I'm going to attach this in the same way. So I'll get some nice liquid adhesive on there and, um, and uh, just like the back piece, uh, burnish it really well, push out all of that air. So that pretty much completes the, um, the final drawer. And because the drawer is so big and with my camera set up where it's at so close in that it's hard to give you a, a good, um, you know, real time close up look. So I'm just going to show some photos that I've taken at different angles and, um, and hopefully that gives you a really good idea for how the completed project, uh, looks when it's all complete and when it's all, um, together, all three pieces of, of this kit. So you have the stand at the bottom with the really ornate little legs. You've got your main um, storage unit that has the eight drawers. Really love, I really love um, kind of upgrading these drawers with the metal handles instead of having just that little thumb notch to pull it out. And then of course you've got that lovely um, top section, a little bit of an extra shelf, uh, an extra little mantle because, because it does have the back and the two sides. You could put things there and um, that's just a little bit of extra storage space as well. So really super excited. I hope that you enjoyed um, this tutorial. And when I get the, the smaller version, I will definitely um, kind of do some of the things that I was suggesting <laughs> after having uh, put this one together. And I'll see how that process works for me and uh, let you know what I think is the better approach uh, once I give that one a shot. Thank you so much again for joining me today. And until next time, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Bye.